Hi there guys, I'm Nikhil from Grady Tech and in this video, I'll be showing you all the best features of Redmi Note 8 Pro. By the way guys, I've already made a dedicated video for the tips and tricks section where I talked about many things which I won't be covering in this video. So definitely check out that video, link will be in the description. Now with that said, the most highlighting feature about this phone would be performance. This phone sports a MediaTek Helio G90T processor with Mali G76 MC4 GPU with 6GB of LPDDR4X RAM and 64GB of storage in the base variant with UFS 2.1 storage. These are the Anti2 and Geekbench scores. When it comes to performance, this phone is definitely a beast. Next best thing about this phone would be its display. Redmi Note 8 Pro sports a massive 6.53 inch display with a dot notch with HDR support with Full HD plus resolution and 500 nits of brightness. It's also protected by a 2.5D curved Corningorilla Glass 5 for some additional protection. Display on this phone is definitely one of the best displays in this price segment. Going on next, this phone also has support for fast charging. This phone supports fast charging and also comes with an 18 watt spot adapter inside the box. Coupled with a 4500mAh battery, battery life on this phone is gonna be great. Next, this phone also comes with some pretty impressive cameras. On the rear, it has a quad camera setup with a 64 megapixel primary camera with f1.89 aperture and a 20 megapixel selfie camera with f2.0 aperture. These are some sample shots. Next, this phone also comes with a wide angle camera. It is an 8 megapixel camera with 120 degree field of view with f2.2 aperture. These are some sample shots. Now going on next, this phone also has a dedicated night mode for the red camera and even for selfies to take better pictures in low lighting conditions. These are some sample shots. Going on next, this phone also has a dedicated 64MP mode. Now even though this phone has a 64 megapixel primary camera, by default, it takes pictures in 16 megapixel resolution. For some reason, if you want to take a 64 megapixel picture, you can use this dedicated mode. Next, I'm going to show you some important MIUI 11 related features. First, we have different notification styles. From here, you can choose between Android style or MIUI styles. And there is definitely a pretty significant difference between the notification styles of stock Android and MIUI. Next, we also have a new feature called Sky Edit. Even though it has been even on the previous MIUI 9 phones, this feature is still pretty new. Using this feature, you can literally change the sky in the background. You get different presets and all of them look pretty cool. Next, we have Dynamic Alarms. Now, this is a brand new feature in MIUI 11 that gives you dynamic alarm tones depending upon the time of the day. So, if you have an alarm in the morning, you get a different tone. If you have it in the evening, you get a different tone. So that's the new dynamic alarm feature and we also get lot of new natural sounds. Next we have MI Share. Now this is a feature from Xiaomi just like Share It, which can be used to transfer any kind of data between two smartphones. When compared to Share It, at least this version is much more cleaner. Next we have Video Wallpapers. Now using this feature, you can set up a video as your lock screen wallpaper or a home screen wallpaper. Here's a quick preview. Next we have Digital Wellbeing. Now this is a feature from Google which literally tracks all your usage, analyzes it and gives you a complete report. Using this feature, you can track your usage and if you want, you can also put restrictions upon yourself. Like if you don't want to use YouTube for more than 15 minutes a day, you can put such restrictions using this feature. Next we have Wind Down. This is another feature from Google which is part of digital well-being. This feature will allow you to automatically enable do not disturb mode 
and grayscale mode at a specific time on any given day. This feature is more like a gentle reminder to go to sleep early. Next it offers AI mode for both the front and rear cameras. Just like most of the flagships these days, this phone also offers AI mode for both the front and rear cameras. Depending upon the scene, it automatically detects few elements like plants, food or vehicles and then enhances some details about the image to make it look more pleasing. These are some sample pictures. Next it offers portrait mode for both the front and rear cameras. Now this is like the most common feature we find in almost all the phones these days and even this phone offers that. Now these are some sample pictures. Now going on next, we can also edit those portrait charts. Just open the picture in the default gallery application and click the aperture button on the top right corner of the screen and you get three options. First we can change the amount of background blur effect we want. Following that we have light trails where the background simply moves around to give you a pretty cool effect. And after that, finally we have the studio lighting effects. This is a new feature, at least as of now, it's not available on all the Xiaomi phones. Now going on next, this phone even offers electronic image stabilization. Now by default it's always turned on and because of electronic image stabilization, some part of the sensor is cropped and you get a cropped footage. For some reason if you don't want stabilization and want a much wider footage, you can always disable it from the settings. This is the sample footage. Now going on next, we have the famous full screen gestures. Personally, this is my favorite implementation and probably the best implementation for full screen gestures on Android. Now for a quick preview, once you enable this feature, you can swipe from the bottom of the screen to go home, swipe and hold for decent apps, swipe from the left side or right side to go back. This is really an awesome feature and I miss it on almost all the phones. Now going on next, we have quick ball. You want to use your phone single-handedly? then this is a great solution for you. Once you enable this feature, a floating bubble will pop up. You can use it in two ways. You can either tap and select the option or else we can swipe. Personally, I like to go with swipe option with navigation keys. Once everything is properly set up, you can simply swipe on the floating bubble to go back, go home or even open recent tabs page. Now going on next, we have some handy gestures. First, we have the double tap to wake. Now this one is pretty simple. Just enable this feature and double tap your screen to wake it up. If you are using face unlock on this phone, then you can simply double tap your phone, phone wakes up, sees your face and immediately unlocks the phone. You don't even have to use the fingerprint scanner. It is super convenient. Next we have raised wake. Now this is another super useful feature. Once you enable this feature, every time you raise your phone, your display lights up and shows you the lock screen. Once again, if you have enabled face unlock feature, it wakes up, sees your face and immediately unlocks the phone. So this feature in combination with face unlock works just like the latest iPhones. Now going on next, we have two super shortcuts to quickly open the camera application. First way is to open the camera application by pressing the power button twice. This particular shortcut works anywhere and anytime. Just enable it from additional settings and every time you press the power button twice, camera application will pop up almost immediately. Most of the time it works. Another way to open camera application is from the lock screen. Now once you enable this feature from lock screen settings, on your lock screen you can press the volume down button twice to quickly open the camera application. Well that's a feature and it works but personally I still like to use the power button. Now going on next we have three finger screenshot. Now before I show you that feature, let me show you how to take a regular screenshot. On this phone or any other phone out there, especially Android phones, if you want to take a screenshot, press the volume down and power button both at the same time. Once you do that, your phone will take a screenshot. For some reason, if that's a bit difficult for you, you can always use the notification toggle. Now coming back to 3 finger screenshot, once you enable this feature, you can simply swipe down using 3 fingers to take a screenshot. This is personally my favorite way to take a screenshot. Next we have long screenshot. Now to take a long screenshot on this phone, first we need to take a regular screenshot. We can either use the buttons, notification toggle or the gesture. And once you have taken a picture, you will get a preview at the top right corner of the screen. 
Just click that and then click scroll. Your phone will scroll the current application automatically and then take a long screenshot. If you want to stop in between, you can always click the done button and it will take a long screenshot up to that point. You can find those long screenshots along with your regular screenshots. Next we have a shortcut to turn on the torch. Now there are many ways to turn it on but personally I like to long press the back button to turn on the torch. This is how you do it and once you're done you can press and hold the back button anywhere anytime that's when your phone is unlocked to turn on the torch. Now that's definitely a very convenient way to turn on the torch and once you're done doing it again will turn it off. Next we have dual apps. Now Xiaomi has this awesome feature called dual apps which allows you to use two instances of the same application. That means you can use two Facebook accounts, two Instagram accounts, two Twitter accounts or even two WhatsApp accounts on the same phone. Now there are many phones out there that offer a similar feature but all those brands offer this feature only for few applications, especially social media applications. While on this phone, we can use dual apps feature on literally all the applications. Next we have reading mode. On many other phones it's also called as night mode and once you enable this feature, it puts a warm tint on the screen and filters the blue light. According to research, blue light emitted by our displays at night will affect our sleep. So using this feature will prevent that. We can also change the intensity of the warm tint. We can also schedule it to turn on and turn off at a specific time or at sunrise and sunset. Now going on next, we also have the option to record calls automatically on this phone. Now this feature is definitely available in India but I don't know about other places and if you want to activate it, you need to open the phone dialer, go to settings, then select call recording and turn it on. You can either record all the calls or few specific calls. If you have signed into your MI account, you can also back up all these call logs. Going on next, we have one handed mode. Now for some reason, if you think this phone has a massive display and if you can't use it single handedly, you can use this feature. Once you turn on this feature, you can swipe on the navigation bar from home to left or right to shrink the screen. In this mode, you can literally do anything, make calls, take pictures and do everything with a single hand. You can swipe in the same direction to go full screen. You can swipe in the opposite direction to switch to the other side and do it again to go full screen once again. From settings, you can also change the size of this window. I meant the screen. Next, we have some pretty cool gestures related to phone calls. First, we have flip to silent stringer. Now, just like the name suggests, when your phone is lying on a flat surface, when you get a call, you can flip your phone to silence the ringer. Next, we have quiet ringer when lifted. Once you enable this feature, whenever you get a call, you can pick up your phone and the ringtone volume goes down. It won't go completely silent, but ringtone volume does go down. Next, we have increasing ringtone volume. Once you enable this feature, every time you get a call, ringtone volume starts with low volume and gradually increases. Next we have flash when ringing. Once you enable this feature, every time you get a call, your flashlight, that's the rear flash, flickers. Next we have mute first ring from unknown numbers. Now once you enable this feature, every time you get a call from any unknown number, first ring, that's probably 2-3 to three seconds, will be silent and after that, you will hear the ringtone. Next, this phone has a super handy feature to identify unknown numbers. Just like Truecaller, Xiaomi collects information from various sources to identify spam and scam calls. It isn't as effective as Truecaller, but it does work. Next, we have a brand new feature called Game Speed Booster. Now, this is like a dedication application in itself. And once you open it up, this is how it looks like. You can add all your games to this list and then swipe right for settings. Now, from here, you can do a lot of things. Improve the gaming experience by clearing the cache. You can also configure the navigation shortcuts, restrict network switching while playing the game, restrict background sync, prioritize network usage, enable silent mode, hands-free mode, and even fix the screen brightness. Whenever you open any of the games from your list, all these settings will be applied automatically. Next we have secondary space. Now this feature creates a small box kind of a thing in your phone where you can have different accounts, different set of apps and so on. If you need two different phones for your work and for your personal life, using this feature we can do with it with just one phone. Now going on next, we can also change the background app usage. MIUI offers you additional options to tweak individual apps to further improve battery life. You can completely stop applications from running in the background 
you can restrict background access, you can restrict background sync and usage and do stuff like that. It might help, but usually its effects are not that visible. Now going on next, we have wireless display. Now using this feature, you can cast the screen of your phone to any television with Miracast or to a Chromecast. This feature works really well with MI TVs. Next we have MI Mover. Now if this is a brand new phone and if you want to transfer all your data from your previous Xiaomi phone to this new Xiaomi phone, you can use this feature. Just select MI Mover on both phones and do the needful to transfer all your data from your previous phone to your brand new phone. Next we have MI Drop. Now this is a feature just like Share It app for Xiaomi phones. It comes pre-installed on all the phones and using this feature, you can transfer any kind of data, whether it's applications, photos, videos or anything, or Wi-Fi between two Xiaomi phones. Next we have Local Backup. In Backup and Reset settings, we have the option to backup everything on your phone, along with user data. This is really handy when you have to reset your phone and quickly take a backup of your apps. Now when you reset your phone, all this data will be deleted. So once you are done with the backup, copy it to your PC or a pen drive and transfer it back to your phone once you are done resetting your phone. Next we have lock screen carousel. Now if you are a person who likes to change lock screen wallpapers all the time, this is a great feature for you. You can like them, delete them and even go to settings and customize this feature further. Now going on next, we have themes. If you are someone who likes to tweak the look and feel of your phone, then Xiaomi phones or MIUI itself is great for that. You have tons of themes, tons of fonts and wallpapers and stuff. You can download it from the themes app and apply them with just a click of a button. Here's a quick preview. Next we have a super handy feature called scanner. It's more like an application itself. Now this is how it looks like. You can scan a regular QR code and most importantly, take pictures of documents. Now, no matter which angle you take pictures in, it automatically aligns the page, changes the perspective and crops the image to give you the perfect document. You can also grayscale it and copy the text from the image. Next, we have a feature called SMS Schedule. Now using this feature, we can automatically send an SMS on a specific date at a specific time. This is probably one of the most coolest features of this phone. Well, nowadays most people don't send messages, well especially SMS, but if you are someone who want to automate it, you can do it on this phone. Next we have auto start permission. No matter how many times you kill any application or close an application, some applications start automatically in the background, say like Facebook, Instagram and Twitter, and they end up draining the battery, especially if you don't use those apps a lot. So using this feature, you can restrict those applications from auto starting in the background. Next we have pocket mode. Once you enable this feature, your phone will prevent all accidental touches when your phone is in your pocket. Next we have app vault. Now looking at the name, you might think it's an app lock kind of a feature, Well, it's not. In the default launcher on the leftmost screen, you get a dedicated page with multiple widgets for quick shortcuts, notes, stock prices, call a cap feature, cricket scores and so on. So if you want to see this page, enable app vault and if you want to hide it, disable it. Next we have the option to mirror buttons. Now usually on most phones, especially phones with pure stock android, it doesn't give you the option to swap the back and menu button. But on this phone, we can do it. Next we have an app lock built into the system. We can set it up with a different password from your lock screen password and obviously lock applications. Now whenever you try to open any logged application, you have to either enter the password or we can use a fingerprint scanner. Now there are many third party applications which can do the same, but this feature comes inbuilt and it's quite secure. Next we have private SMS. Now for some reason, if you want to hide messages from a specific contact, using this feature you can do that. In the default messaging application, you can swipe down until you see the lock to enter the private messages space. Once again, you have to set up a password and it can be different from your lock screen password and app lock. From here, you can configure this feature. Next, we have folder vault. Now using this feature, we can hide files on your phone. Whether it's a video, photo or any other file, you can hide all those files in the folder vault. To use this feature, open the file manager and swipe down until you see the lock icon. 
Once again, you have to set up a password and it can be different from any other password you have already set. Now, once you are done configuring this feature, you can select any file, go to menu and click hide to hide that file. So guys, those were all the best features. If I missed out on anything important, do let me know by commenting below this video and definitely check out my video on tips and tricks section. Link is in the description. Now, if you are planning to buy this phone, please use the link in the description. It always helps the channel. And if you want us to make any specific video, tweet out to us with the hashtag AskGreedyTech on Twitter and we will try to make it as soon as possible. I am Nikhil from GreedyTech signing off. Have a nice day.